This is programming chapter seven. We're going to look at linked lists. This is the first of data structures that you're going to learn. In order to use linked lists, you need to learn how to allocate memory dynamically on the heap, and you need to learn about objects. Recall that local variables are temporary and they get created on the stack and get destroyed upon exit of the function. Objects are built of native data types and or objects. Special objects called classes include a set of functions that operate only on that object. By having functions that work with the objects, it opens up more naming options without the worry of name collisions. For example, we could have a rectangular shape class and a circle shape class. Both shapes are free to use the variables x and y, and both can have a function called draw without any confusion because you can only use them when associated with that type of object. And this is one of the great features of classes with object-oriented languages. Since functions belong to the class, it makes autocomplete for function names easy because the list of possible functions is smaller. With classes, we find that the three languages that we're learning diverge quickly. C++ and Java have classes called class. Objective-C also has classes, but they look quite different. C++ creates classes from scratch, so there's no overhead, but there's also no support. Java and Objective-C have classes derived from a base class, object, and NS object, respectively. These base objects provide some functionality, but most importantly is garbage collection or automatic reference counting, or in short, ARC. This means you don't have to manage memory yourself. Let's start with C++. It requires you to allocate objects and free up objects when you don't need to use them anymore. If you don't free up the memory and run the program for a long time, you will end up using all your memory and the program will crash. Also, if you try to use a pointer from a deallocated object, you will get errors. Memory management is generally easy for small programs, but more difficult for larger programs where objects may get used in unexpected ways. So you've seen objects allocated as globals, objects allocated on the local vars or the stack. And now if we allocate an object, it goes into the heap, and this is dynamic memory. We can copy this pointer to the same block of memory. And if we free up circle, oops, we'll call this circle one. Circle one will be pointing to an illegal object because it's been freed up. That's where the difficulty in using memory with C++ comes in. Now for Objective-C, again, we can allocate an object circle. This is in the heap as well. And as soon as we do that, it has an object counter. It counts to one. If we have another pointer, circle one, pointing to this object, this gets changed to two. If we change circle to a point to something else, this counter gets changed to one. And that something else could just be pointing to null. If we change circle one to point to null, this gets changed to zero. And any time an object counter goes to zero, it gets freed up by the language. So, there are potential problems with manual memory management and ARC, and these variables point to a specific memory location. And what happens is there's a potential for fragmentation, and too much fragmentation can lead to an out-of-memory error. So, suppose we allocate this, 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 and we free up this, and we allocate something of this size. Now we have a very small block of memory. 
Again, we allocate something small. And then there's a small block of memory there. Now we can free up this one. Free up this one. And now when we're trying to allocate a big object, it doesn't fit into the, either of these spaces. So it has to go to the end. So what happens is we keep going deeper and deeper into the heap and we get all these little holes. Java handles memory quite differently. It uses handles rather than pointers to memory. It also has garbage collection instead of counting. Handles are a little slower because it's a pointer to a pointer. And the first pointer never changes. It's a handle. And let's look at that. So again, we go circle. It points to this pointer. And this pointer will point to that. So let's say this is used, this is used, this is used. Now, garbage collection works by keeping track of all live objects. As soon as something's not being pointed to from the root, these objects aren't accessible from the root and they're considered dead, and the memory is available for use. Now, the advantage of handles is when memory gets fragmented, the JVM can defrag memory by removing all the free space holes. And this pointer is free to change. Circle points to a pointer, and JVM is free to change this pointer without breaking the code. So if we free this up, and then JVM decides to defragment, this one will move to this location, and this will be gone. And then this will move forward, and there's no holes in your heap. Now, the problem with JVM defragmenting your memory is that it could stall your program. And if it stalls at an inconvenient time, this causes lag. And you don't want this in a game type situation. And in any application, you don't want it to stall at an unexpected time. So, you know what Java does? And even though that C++ and Objective-C can have these problems, you can always create your own memory manager and have handles instead of pointers. And you can have your own defragment routine and you can call it whenever you want rather than when the language wants to do it. And that's what we did when I worked at EA. We had our own memory manager and we never had memory problems due to stalls or fragmentation. Okay, enough with the background. Let's look at some coding before we continue. And we'll look at how to use the syntax to create a class and how to create and delete objects. And we'll worry about recursion later. Okay, here we have a global variable. Here we have a local variable. Here we have our class. For now, we're going to make this public. Uh, if it's made private, then non-member functions cannot access these variables. And generally, you want to make everything as private as possible and just have public interfaces for what you need to expose. This allows you the freedom of modifying how your class works without breaking other people's code. Okay, let's run this. Okay, we have a breakpoint. We can see where our global variable is. It has a starting address of 318. Our stack variable has a starting address of 2EF. So let's step over the code a bit. We've created node 1. It has a starting address of 58B. And this is on the heap. We know that because it's different than these addresses. The heap's not going to be always in the same spot, depending on how big your program is. 
and depending on how the compiler is configured. Let's allocate node 2. It has the same starting address, so it's also on the heap. Notice node 3 has an undefined memory location. We step over. Node 3 copies node 1's pointer, so they're both pointing at the same object. And if we look at our output, it confirms this. Now we're setting a value to the number in node 1. C++ requires this minus sign and greater than sign to access member functions and member variables. And we're assigning negative 6 to node 2's number. And we can open these up and examine them. And that's what we have. Now we're deleting node 1, and we're deleting node 2. Uh, let's look at the output first, and we're printing 15 and 6. If we look at node 3, it's not valid anymore because it's been deallocated, so we don't see 15 in there. And if we look at the final addresses, this is non-valid, this is non-valid. Again, this points to the location, but the object is no longer valid. So your assignment is to create your own class with some member variables, create some of its objects using your class, assign the variables some value, and print them out. There's no sample printout for this exercise. You are free to do whatever class you want and to print out whatever you need to. And that completes part one. Proceed to part two when you're done.